Welcome to Counters. Here we are looking at consolidated statement of cash flows. We've done a few lessons on various aspects that are unique to the consolidated statement of cash flows as opposed to the statement of cash flows for a single entity. Now here specifically we are focusing on the dividends paid to non-controlling interest and you'll see just now some of the lessons we have done and you'll find them in the links in the description below as well. So what are dividends that are paid to non-controlling interest? Well, remember when a company purchases a subsidiary or purchases part of a subsidiary, unless you've purchased 100% of the subsidiary, you will likely have dividends paid to non-controlling interest. So when you've been asked to do the consolidated statement of cash flows, you also have to do these calculations and see if any dividend was paid. Remember if a dividend is paid by the subsidiary and you do not own 100% of the subsidiary, part of the dividend will go to non-controlling interest. So we have to determine what that dividend is. So you have to remember a group statement of cash flows should only show flows of cash external to the group. Just like we've done on the lessons relating to the consolidated statement of financial position and the consolidated statement of comprehensive income, we are concerned with transactions external to the group, not between the parent and its subsidiaries because that is internal to the group, all right? Those ones, we eliminated them, as you would know. If you've checked out our other lessons, you'll also find them in the description below. So here we are looking at cash flows external to the group. If money is being moved from the subsidiary to the parent and vice versa, that will not come into our cash flow statement or the consolidated statement of cash flows because it's internal to the group. The money is still staying within the group. I hope that is making sense. So here are the lessons we are doing, and these are the issues that are specific to the consolidated statement of cash flows as opposed to an individual entity. The main issues dealt with in this consolidated statement relate to dividends paid to non-controlling interest, which is what we are doing in this particular lesson. That's why it's highlighted in red. But we've also done the dividends received from associates. Uh, you'll check that one out in the link in the description below, as well as the payments to acquire subsidiaries and the receipts from sales of subsidiaries. So whenever you have dividends that you've paid to non-controlling interest or dividends that is paid by the subsidiary, then you will have dividends that is paid to non-controlling interest, dividends received from associates. If we've invested in an associate, then when the dividend is paid, then the group is going to receive that dividend. And then we have payment to acquire subsidiaries and received from sales of subsidiaries. It's important to note that the payment to acquire subsidiaries must have happened in this particular financial period. If it happened, let's say, five years ago, then obviously it's not a cash movement for this financial period, as well as received from sale of subsidiaries. If it didn't happen during this financial period, then we're not going to put it in just like we do for a normal financial statement now an important thing to note here is that if you do not know how to do the statement of cash flows for a single entity you will always struggle and battle to do it for a group so I would just caution you to first understand how to do a statement of cash flows for a single entity before looking at this one here in order for you to understand it much better all right, and you'll find that these four things are unique to the group statement of cash flows, like I've mentioned, that you will not find for a single entity's statement of cash flows. Now, it's important to mention here that dividends paid to non controlling interest, which is what we are doing, is included in either the cash flows from financing or operating activities section and disclosed separately. But this depends on the standard that is being used. So you might see it in the cash flows from financing activities section or cash flows from operating activities section. So it's very easy for you to determine which one you should do based on the examples that you would have received or in your textbook, but it is following a specific standard. So if you're using US GAAP, for instance, you will definitely see it in the cash flows from financing activities. And if you're using IFRS, you'll either see it in the cash flows from financing activities or operating activities. In fact, we have done a separate lesson on that, just explaining the difference why you'd see it in operating or financing, just like I've just mentioned. If you'd like to understand that much better, it's a short lesson, you'll find it in the link in the description below as well. So how do you calculate dividends paid to non-controlling interest? Well, here is the formula, it's quite easy. You take the balance brought down or the opening non-controlling interest balance, and you'll get this balance from the statement of financial position for the prior year. And then you add the profit attributable to non-controlling interest. This is found obviously in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive 
income where you have the profit attributable to non-controlling interest and then the dividends paid to non-controlling interest will be the balancing figure because you will have this last one here balance carried down or closing non-controlling interest balance well this is the non-controlling interest balance found in the statement of financial position for this current year so balance brought down or the opening nci balance is the one in the statement of financial position for the prior year and this one here closing nci balance is the one for the current year and the profit attributable to non-controlling interest will be found in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income all right so unless you're asked to do all the statements including the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income then you will be given those statements and asked to do this consolidated statement of cash flows and when you're calculating dividends paid to non-controlling interest this is what you'll do now we'll go through an example and just see how easy it is to do this one on a basic level all right so here is the example that we're going to look at we're given here the consolidated statement of profit or loss for the year ended 28 february 2021 obviously this is an extract it doesn't include everything in the statement of profit or loss or the consolidated statement of profit or loss we're also given the consolidated statement of financial position extract as at 28 february 2021 obviously we're also given the comparative year 2020 Okay, and we're only given this line item because it's an extract, the non-controlling interest for 2020 and 2021. And we're asked to calculate the dividends paid to non-controlling interest during the year. So we want to know how much dividends was actually paid to non-controlling interest in 2021. Now, what I'd like you to do, if you looked at the formula in the previous slide, just take that formula and try and get the answer here. It should be quite easy for you to do. And this is the answer that you will plug in to your consolidated statement of cash flows, all right, where you ought to put it down and just put the dividends paid to non-controlling interest and you put that answer. So pause the video here, attempt to get the answer on your own, and then you will continue to see if you got it correctly. All right, I hope you have attempted to do it on your own. Let's bring back the formula here. Here we go. Firstly, we have to find the balance brought down or the opening NCI balance or non-controlling interest balance. And then we get the profit attributable to non-controlling interest. And then we get the balance carried down or the closing non-controlling interest balance. And then we'll get the balancing figure, which is dividends paid to non-controlling interest. So the first one, what is the opening non-controlling interest balance? Well, like I said, you got the consolidated statement of financial position and you look at the previous year, which is 2020, and we have 250,000 rand. So that is our opening non-controlling interest balance. You'll find this in the equity section of the consolidated statement of financial position. So we put the 250,000 as the opening balance here. And then the profit attributable to non-controlling interest, well, that is in the consolidated statement of profit or loss. And you can see here, profit attributable to non-controlling interest is 20,000 Rand. So we're going to put it down here as 20,000. There we go. And then we know that dividends paid to NCI is what we're looking for and it's the balancing figure, but we have the closing non-controlling interest balance, which is found in the consolidated statement of financial position. And it's in 2021, 262,000 Rand here. So if dividends was not paid by the subsidiary at all, that means that we would expect this closing balance to be 270,000 Rand because we just take the 250,000 Rand plus the 20,000 Rand and it will give us 270. But you can see it's giving us less than 270,000 Rand. So we know that they must have paid a dividend. Remember, dividend is paid after the profit has been calculated or after profit after tax, okay? So we know that once the dividend is paid, then you will have your amounts for the parent and the one for the non-controlling interest in the consolidated statement of financial position. So since it's 262, we know that they paid a dividend. So we take 250,000 Rand opening NCI balance plus the 20,000 Rand profit attributable to NCI. And then we minus this closing balance of 262,000 Rand. And we can see that dividends paid to non-controlling interest was actually 8,000 Rand. And now it should make sense if you take 250,000 Rand plus 20,000 Rand minus 8,000 Rand should give you 262,000 Rand. And that is how easy it is to calculate dividends paid to non-controlling interest. Obviously, this is how you usually find the question being asked unless it's much more complicated. But this is the easy way that you usually find it. I hope that's made sense. I hope you attempted it on your own and you got the correct answer as I did here. And you can see applying the formula is quite easy. If this made sense, consider subscribing to our channel, like this video, and share it to those who think it might help. Till next time, cheers.